people of the internet, I am doing a little collaboration with a couple of other YouTubers. This is our Halloween special. I'm sure they're going to be running around and making all sorts of little fun clips and whatnot that they can add into their videos, try to make them as fun as possible, but I'm currently in the city and running around outside with firearms is probably not going to be something that I want to do. So I'm stuck inside whenever I make this video, unfortunately. That being said, in this video we're going to be talking about a couple of military surplus firearms. So if you like that type of stuff, then uh, subscribe to the channel because you're in the right place. That being said, as much as I'd love to go running around with these firearms, I just don't have the resources to be able to do that on a regular basis. So if you want to help me with those resources, then the Patreon and Neutron is below. And I'm selling some t-shirts if you want to help the cause, or you can do a one-time donation through the merch store. So, the idea with this collaboration for this Halloween special is there is an AI slash robot takeover. I imagine something very similar to, like, Terminator, like the AI has just taken over and they're taking out humanity. And based off of what it is that I have in my arsenal, I have to decide what it is I'm going to be using uh, in this AI takeover. And this is something that really uh, throws me in a different direction than what it is that I would normally go with. In a normal SHTF situation where humans are by far the most lethal thing that you would have to worry about besides disease, uh, I would normally end up going with something like an AR platform just because of ammunition availability and parts availability and the amount of ARs that are around the country and it just being a really good rifle. So I'd probably end up going with one of my AR rifles. However, in the instance of having to fight robots, uh, well, if you're going through metal and they have, you know, armor plating or who knows what they have, we were very loose on the definition of what it is that these things would be. It, I just, I, I, I was told, hey, AI robot defense, what do you got? <laughs> so, uh, the definition of what it is I'm going up against is very, very loose. But 556 five, tends to fragment and break apart since it travels at very high velocities and it's a small bullet. And uh, even the steel rounds don't do all that well whenever it comes to multiple layer penetration. So on the robots, if I penetrate that first layer of metal and there's something on the inside that stops that bullet from traveling even further, then maybe I won't be able to get adequate penetration on that particular cyborg in order to do as much damage as I would like to do. 556 is just not a round, even the steel core stuff is just not a round that I would want to stake my life on if I was going up against robots. I feel like it would not do adequate damage. Now, if you're going up against soft targets, where you don't really have to worry about that, uh, 556 can be incredibly effective. However, against robots, uh, I have to kind of lean more towards my experience shooting at, like, microwaves. <laughs> I do have some experience on the YouTube channel where I've shot at, like, microwaves and various electronics and whatnot. And 5.56 five, does not seem to do very well whenever it's being shot at metal, especially if you're trying to damage things beyond that metal. It just doesn't work all that well. And I don't foresee it doing all that great whenever it comes to uh, destroying these robots. I need something that fires a larger, heavier projectile. 7.62 by 39 is a better option, but it's still pretty gosh darn slow moving. It travels about 23, 2400 or so feet per second, and the bullets are still fairly lightweight. You have uh, the 7.62 by 39, it tends to go around 123-ish grain projectiles. That's not that heavy. <clears throat> So although I have self-loading firearms in 5.56 and 7.62 by 39, I'm thinking I would want some sort of uh, firearm that has a full power rifle cartridge. One thing I lean towards is my M1 Grand, M1 Garand, however it is you want to pronounce that, but 30-06 ammunition is not that practical of a round to be able to find for end of the world purposes simply because it's no longer being used by NATO forces. I think you see where I'm going with this. I would probably lean into using something chambered in 7.62 NATO. 7.62 NATO has a tremendous amount of options for armor piercing rounds. Not only that, but since it's a military cartridge, there's other rounds like incendiary or tracers or you know whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, but armor piercing is probably what it is I would go for simply because I don't really know what I'm going up against. But I'm assuming that the robots are going to be made of metal and they're probably going to have some kind of armor on them. So 
armor piercing ammunition it is. So the beauty about 7.62 NATO, it's a 308 diameter projectile. So any 308 diameter armor piercing ammo bullets I find, I can make ammunition out of, which is a huge, huge perk inside the United States because that's like the main bullet diameter. You're gonna have 223, 9mm, and 308 diameter projectiles. Now, I actually do not have a self loading 7.62 NATO rifle. So, out of everything that I have, if I was going up against robots, I would take a step back in technology and I would go with my Ishapur 2A1. This right here is what I would pick as my primary firearm because it's chambered in 7.62 NATO. Uh, it's a fast, capable rifle. I would try to get as many magazines for it as possible because this does take external magazines. It is an infield system. It's only got a 45 degree bolt throw. I think that's what it is, if memory serves me correctly. Talk on close action, very fast system, but I can load these with uh, AP routes. And I could actually load these a little bit spicier than I would if I was firing these out of a self-loading semi-automatic rifle because self-loading semi-automatic rifles require a specific pressure um, pressure curve in order to reliably function that firearm, but if I'm manually functioning the firearm, then I could load these to be a little bit spicier and a little bit more effective than it would normally be. I do not recommend doing that in a, a real life situation, but we're talking about me going up and fighting robots. I need as much advantage as I can get. So this is likely what I would take if I was going up against robots just because of that AP ammunition availability. Now, actually, I do have this Car 98 here, and I will have people go into the comments and tell me, I'll take a Car 98, because it also has AP rounds. Yes, the Car 98 does have AP rounds. Good luck finding them. There are AP rounds that are out there, but if you're looking at, like, the blue label stuff, then that is, like, just hardened steel AP stuff, and that is not actually going to penetrate things like the AP ammunition you're thinking of. Odds are, if you're thinking about the stuff that goes through level 4 plates, you're looking for the red label boxes, and those are very rare and very hard to find. There's a tungsten core bullet that can be fired from the Car 98. If you have a surplus of that in a Car 98, then there you go. You're pretty much good to go, but that is a very rare ammo to find, even here inside the United States. Something like armor-piercing 7.6 tornado is significantly easier, uh, even if you're going to be loading it from old 308 rounds from... Uh, 308 diameter rounds from old uh, surplus 30 out 6 black tips. So that would give you the uh, armor piercing ammunition that you need. This right here is not the greatest rifle that I would want to go out with. If I could choose, I would pick up a self loading rifle of some kind, but I don't have one of those as of right now. So as far as my arsenal goes, I would go with my Ishapur right here. I think this would be the best option for going up against robots depending on what kind of robots it is I'm going up against. If it's like Terminator robots, then, oh boy, I don't even think that, like if I was going up against like the Arnold Schwarzenegger style of Terminator, then uh, I don't foresee even the black tip 308s being able to do much damage to something like that. Yeah, if it's that kind of robot, I'm better off just not using a rifle and running for my life. I would probably keep like a handgun on me or something for defense against humans and that's probably about it but if it's something that the AP rounds can actually do some damage against I'd go with my Ishapur rifle. So I'm excited to see what the others chose. One of the other uh, YouTubers I'm collaborating with is 8mm Mauser Man and uh, I wonder if he will also pick his Ishapur 2A1 because it has some huge benefits behind it. I'm also collaborating with Joe Morgan, uh, uh, Arasaka Type 99, and Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gears Gunderson. So go check those guys out. I know I will definitely enjoy watching their videos and seeing their pick for the rifle. That's what I'd pick for the handgun. I don't think it would matter for the handgun. We'll call it a 1911 because it's 45 ACP, heavy bullets. I mean, that's probably going to be the best option. Either that or a 9mm, but let's face it, these right here are if humans start giving me issues in uh, the, the robot world. Like, that is not something that I would use going up against any sort of uh, metallic robots. 9mm and 45 ACP are just not good at penetration. If I could pick, and I had to pick, uh, I don't own one, but for a handgun, I would probably pick something in 5.7. 
and I would pick some sort of AP 5.7 round, and that would probably be the best pick that you could get whenever it comes to uh, a handgun option going up against robots. Well, thanks for watching, folks. This was a fun one, that's for sure. What would you guys pick if you had to go up against cyborgs? All this being said, uh, like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs>